Hi, we are uh, now going to look into some of those beliefs that we have about violence and how it works. Uh, we had a very upbeat conversation last time about how wonderful nonviolence is, so I hope that you are upbeat enough to bear with me for this investigation. Uh, I was mostly basing it on a book by Jewett and Lawrence called The American Monomyth, in which they explored uh, the mythology of Superman, making the very plausible argument that on some level we actually believe that stuff. I mean, we don't believe that there's a man who comes, you know, crashing through the windows, but we believe the dynamic that his stories represent. This is a <clears throat> bit of a sidetrack here. This is particularly embarrassing for me because I started my writing career by working for uh, a friend of mine, an adult friend, who was writing Superboy comics. So I actually have some guilt here that I have to expiate <laughs> with this little talk. Uh, but Jewett and Lawrence, to get back to our point, say that if you look at Superman comics, uh, or today, of course, it would be Spider-Man or what have you, they get creepier every year. If you look at those comics, what it says uh, to us at a very deep level about how violence works, are they analyze it into three things. First, that uh, violence is never misused. You never see Superman saying, ha ha, I'm going to go and rob a bank because nobody can shoot me and stash all my money in a bank in Panama or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to what real people do when they experience how, what they can do with violence. Secondly, there is no collateral damage. Violence is clean. You know, Superman will stop a car that's going 60 miles an hour down the freeway and all the bad guys will tumble out and they have a little crossed bandage on their forehead. You can tell I'm dating myself, but that's all right. So there's no collateral damage and innocent people don't get killed, which is horrendously opposite of what's actually happened in uh, war practice since, say, about the Civil War to the Vietnam War, there's been an increase where it was five or 10 percent of civilians were killed directly in the former era, and now we're up to 90 or 95 percent. So that's point number two, and this is a myth in the sense that it's just a complete lie, that uh, it, it's never hurting other people. And thirdly, and most importantly perhaps, that there is not, none of what we call today blowback. Uh, once you have stopped the criminal and he or they are punished, it, end of story, go on to the next issue. And what we're experiencing today, both in the criminal justice system and even more painfully in the war system, is that I believe this is becoming more and more the case, that just as more and more civilians are being injured in war, injured or killed, just as we have millions of refugees uh, coursing the world today, it seems to be the case that more and more there is blowback from wars. So that a commander in Iraq said recently, we are killing terrorists faster, uh, we are making terrorists faster than we can kill them. And that was uh, specified by a lower level officer in Afghanistan recently who, who calculated that for every four terrorists that we kill, 10 rise up to take his place. A really good, good, a really vivid example of this was the Sendero Luminoso uh, uprising in Peru, where these uh, rebels showed year after year they had a terrific ability to kill people. And in the end, the Peruvian people rejected them completely because they did not want killing and killing and killing. And it turned out every time they killed a policeman, once again mistaking the label for the human reality, they killed a policeman. They forgot that that policeman was also a human being who had a family. And so you know, the blowback was very severe. But it's good for us to be aware of what we have been inculcated. And I admit, yes, it's partly my fault I wrote Superboy comics. <laughs> uh, we have actually been inculcated to believe these fantastical things about violence. So thank you for bearing with me.
and that analysis. And let's turn now to the realities of nonviolence.